Welcome to my YouTube channel which is titled Research Methods Class with Dr. Lydia Wabugo. In this class, we discuss everything social science research from understanding the research discipline, research philosophy, the elements of scientific research, and the methodologies of conducting research. In research methods, we have a book titled Research Methods, Theory and Practice. This book is accessible through the website where you can access the hard copy of the book or a downloadable PDF format of the book. In the same website, you are able to access all the courses which includes the free research methods course, IBM SPSS statistics course, M&E consultancy course which are available at a fee. Please find the links in the description. Welcome. Welcome to our class today. And this lesson is going to bring to a close the sections of chapter one of the research proposal. In our previous lesson, we have explained section 1.7, which is significance of the study, 1.8, which is delimitations of the study, and 1.9, which is limitations of the study. And one thing that we have made clear is that writing your limitations is not the opposite of delimitations. Delimitations deals with the scope or the walls that you put around your study, and they can either be geographical or methodological, whereas limitations are those unforeseen factors that may hinder the success of your study. In this lesson, we are going to discuss section 1.10, assumptions of the study, 1.11, definition of significant terms, and 1.12, which is organization of the study. And all these are sections in chapter 1 of the research proposal. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify assumptions of the study, state the two types of definition of terms, and explain how the organization of the study is structured. We keep saying that the structure we are discussing may differ from one institution to the other or the discipline that you are in, but chances are you will require all these sections in your study. Now, so far, we have discussed nine sections. So today we are going to the last three and we complete the sections of chapter one of the research proposal. So that, let us look at section 1.10, which is assumptions of the study. In this context, an assumption is a proposition which a researcher asserts based on his own intuition experience and observation but which is not scientifically proven so these assumptions are based on the experience of the researcher and that is why in our lesson six we said that you conduct research or identify research from an area of interest and from an area where you have experience because it is only if you have experience in that area that you may be able to come up with assumptions which are adopted as a premise to the solution of the problem that is envisioned in your study. We have some common assumptions that many researchers will pick or will assume in their study because they cut across. So there are some obvious assumptions that most researchers will include in their proposal. And these are, one, that the respondents will respond to their questions as honestly as possible, and two, that the sample they have selected is representative of the population and will not be biased. So these are common assumptions that you may find across many proposals because many of the researchers would want to make those two assumptions, including others based on their experience. 
There are some institutions that require the assumptions to be listed and numbered, while others require them to be written as a paragraph and in a continuous prose. So make sure that you follow the, the guidelines that are given by your institution and also what your discipline requires. Let's look at this example. So the researcher assumes that the University of Nairobi offers equivalent examinations to the Bachelor of Education Science on campus and distance study students. You can see this assumption, you may not find it in another proposal. Reason being, this particular research was comparing the performance of Bachelor of Education uh, Science students at the University of Nairobi, those who go through the course on campus and those who th go through the course by distance learning. So the researcher is assuming that though they do not sit for the exams at the same time, they do equivalent exams because the main comparative variable was academic performance. Another assumption that the researcher makes is that the subjects, that means the sample, will respond to all the questions in the instrument as honestly as possible. That is an assumption that you are likely to find across many proposals because almost all researchers rely on the, their sample to give them information. So you have to assume, you have to make that assumption that they will give you responses that are as honest as possible since you are relying on them for you to answer the research questions. Then we move to section 1.11, which is definition of significant terms. Some institutions will refer to it as operational definition of terms. Now, this is the section where the researcher defines the terms that are significant in their study. And these terms are defined operationally. They are defined operationally, meaning how the researcher is measuring those terms in their study. That is why we normally state that and the definition of term, it is the definition as per the usage of the term in the study and not as per the dictionary. Essentially, we have two types of definition. We have the conceptual or the dictionary definition. This is where a concept is defined using other concepts. When you open in a dictionary, that is the definition that you will find. But the definition we define, we use under 1.11 is operational definition. This is the definition that defines variables in measurable terms. That is how variables have been operationalized in the study. So we do not define them as they have been defined by other researchers. We define our terms under section 1.11 as per the study. The terms to be defined are mainly derived from the title, the variables of the study, that is the objective research questions and hypotheses, and also conceptual framework. Please note that when we say they are significant, it is because they are significant to the study and their meaning may confuse your reader. That is why you are defining them as per the usage in your study. So this definition of terms serves as the dictionary of the report. Hence, the terms should be arranged alphabetically because it is like the dictionary of your report. And we can look at this example. If you go through these uh, uh, terms, these are not definitions that you can find in any textbook or in any dictionary. They have been defined as per that study. So for instance, if you look at academic performance, the researcher defines this as the performance of Bachelor of Education Science students, which is measured using mean score that is attained at the end of year examination and also during teaching practice. Now, this is a definition which you cannot find in any other textbook. It has been defined as per the usage of the term in that particular study. Lastly, we look at organization of the study, and this section states how the research study is organized. Please note that it is not how the proposal is organized, it is how the entire 
research study is organized. So organization of the study covers all the five chapters of the project or thesis or dissertation. So you explain the five chapters, how they have been organized. For instance, if you look at this example, you can see chapter one introduces the study. Chapter 2 reviews the related literature. Chapter 3 is the research methodology and the researcher has given the various components of Chapter 3. Chapter 4 will cover analysis, presentation and interpretation of data. Chapter 5 will cover summary of findings, discussions, conclusion, recommendations and suggestions for further research. So note that we are not talking about organization of the proposal, but it is the organization of the study. And this brings us to the end of our lesson and also the end of the sections of chapter one in the research proposal. So we have discussed 12 sections of chapter one of the research proposal. And in this lesson discussed the last three sections, which is assumptions of the study, definition of significant terms and organization of the study. In our next lesson, we are going to start discussing chapter 2 of the research proposal. But before then, make sure you visit the researchmethodsclass.com website where you can watch the full research methods course. You can also access other courses on SPSS and m and Consultancy. You are also able to book for consultation and you can also buy the research methods ebook. So see you in our next lesson as we talk about chapter 2 of the research proposal.